prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude. <laughs> rise and face the baptismal font. Uh, today we are doing a baptismal anniversary celebration, so if you were baptized in the month of September, or if you would just like to do a remembrance of your baptism, you can come up to the font at this time. Siblings in Christ. Today we celebrate the covenant God made with us in our baptism, the covenant in which God cleansed us, embraced us eternally, gave us the Holy Spirit, and freed us to be disciples of Jesus. In that covenant, God also called you to a new life, a life of living among God's faithful people, a life of hearing the word of God and sharing in the Lord's Supper, a life of proclaiming the good news of God in Christ through word and deed a life of serving all people, following the example of our Lord Jesus, a life of striving for justice and peace in all the earth. Let us pray. Gracious God, through water and the Spirit, you have made these children your own. You forgave them all their sin and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Make your forgiveness real for all of us now, that we may be disciples you call us to be. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. May our faith journey together help you to discover how wonderfully God has gifted you the many ways that you are a gift to God's creation and created ones, the new life which comes to those who offer themselves for others, in the name of the one who gave his life for all. May God bless you and enable you to continue to be a blessing. Amen. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace. Right? God among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another. Keep our feet from evil paths. Turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from the book of Amos, chapter 8, verses 4 through 7. Hear this, you that trample on the needy, and bring to ruin the poor in the land, saying, When will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small, and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord is sworn by the pride of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any other deeds. The word of the Lord. Be our song for today will be sung responsibly and led by our cantor. Hallelujah, give praise you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. From the 
rising of the sun to its going down. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high? The Lord takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes. Makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. Hallelujah. Second reading is from First Timothy, second chapter, verses one through seven. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time, for this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There's a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do? Now that my master is taking the position away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. And he asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Please be seated. I need kids to come forward this time. Well, good morning. I dug up a relic from my childhood. 
Do any of you know what this is? Have you ever seen one before? I'll give you a clue. It's a rattle. Well, that's a good thought because it made a rattling noise. But this is when I was a newspaper carrier, long before people started driving cars to deliver newspapers, you walked around. And when you had to collect from them what they owed you, you used one of these to give them their change. And this always fascinated me, and I couldn't wait to get one, because it doesn't work on my bill. But you'd stand there, and somebody would owe you money, and then you go, and say, there's your change. Sorry, not yet. <laughs> and then you got to put it back in and refill, which is always the fun part. But I was thinking about what Jesus said today. You cannot serve God and wealth. And I was thinking about when I first discovered money, what it could do, guess what? I could buy all kinds of candy and bubble gum and stuff like this. So that was fun. But Jesus is saying your heart can't be divided. You can't love wealth and also serve God. But if you're serving God, you can use your wealth in good ways. So I'm curious, um, for you, have you ever shared with other people maybe extra clothes that you've outgrown or toys that you no longer play with? Yeah, that's a great way of spreading the wealth, sharing with others. I'm the youngest of four, so I got all kinds of cool stuff for my older brothers. And so these ways, I think, are just ways that God says, we're like one big community out here, and we're called to love and serve one another as best as we can to make sure that when we fall in love with stuff, it's the right stuff. And even though this was fun, it was not the most important thing. And one of the ways I remind myself when I feel a little bit stingy, just like you with toys or clothes, sometimes the best thing is to give stuff away, and that helps you. So let us pray. And you can say these words after me if you like. Dear God, Dear God thanks for this day. Thanks for friends and family. Thanks for the beauty of your world. Help us to use your gifts to bless others. Amen. Thank you. You want to play with this? You, want, you can try it. We'll stand and sing our hymn of the day, but you can't run away with it yet because I have to have it for the later service.
Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, the good old quid pro quo, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours, are the words of Godfather Vito Corleone, someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus describes this shrewd yet dishonest or unrighteous manager who was savvy enough to read the writing on the wall. He'd been busted. His squandering ways had been exposed to his boss, who was now going to chop him from the payroll. He's got to move quickly before he loses his position. So what is he to do? Too weak to dig and too proud to beg, he calls up a couple of his master's debtors to ease their load a bit and secure for himself a softer landing when he gets booted from his master's service. In the process, he gains a couple co-conspirators, a couple folks who are now indebted not to his master, but are in league with him and his fraudulent behavior. Your bill's 100 jugs of olive oil, make it 50. Notice that the debtor does not say, well, that's dishonest. I can't do such a thing. Oh, no. Give me a pen pronto. The next guy, 100 containers of wheat, make it 80. He, too, doesn't recoil in horror, offended by the proposition of committing fraud. No, give me the pen, and I won't ask any questions. Sometimes in the rough and tumble world of business, you got to do what you got to do. That is if the almighty dollar is truly your almighty. We cannot serve God and wealth. This text is very challenging and not just these parts that are pretty straightforward. Many scholars believe that this parable is the most difficult parable of Jesus to understand. So I checked out one of my recent go-to resources for better understanding a world that I do not know, that is first century Judaism to get some guidance from them. But alas, in the Jewish annotated New Testament, the best they could offer were a few word definitions and well-worn speculations. And then this line. However, the parable defies any fully satisfactory explanation. Great. <laughs> now, a couple things are clear and some of the choices amid some of the choices of interpretation. The master in this parable, as Jesus describes, does not commend the corrupt manager for his honesty or good stewardship. After all, he was the one who was squandering the property even before cooking the books. No, the master commends him for his shrewdness, perhaps for being wise as a serpent, being clever, Creative, thinking outside the box has merit. So that part is clear to me. But admiring dishonesty, cheating, stealing, that would be completely outside the bounds for Jesus, the fulfiller of the law, including thou shalt not steal or thou shalt not covet. Still, I don't know what to make of Jesus' words, and I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, that may, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Some scholars believe that this is an allegory referring back to historic debtors' homes, but that explanation is lost on me. Others speculate that by doing good works that help the poor, we will be in their good graces at the time of the great reversal, when the last shall be first. As to what role that plays in the final judgment, our eternal home, well, all my money's still on Jesus for that one. Jesus then goes on to speak of faithfulness and true riches, that much like raising children, the more trustworthy the behavior, the more freedoms and resources can be entrusted to them. And we're now suffering the consequences of me leading children into, con into temptation because <laughs> you can't, <laughs> the coin changer is just too good to pass up. <laughs> Lastly, Jesus concludes with a statement of fact 
a warning for our hearts about the tempting power of wealth, a power that Jesus elevates as fierce a competitor for our hearts as God is. Jesus speaks plainly. We cannot serve God and wealth. One of these must and will have the upper hand. And which one gets our greater attention will dictate how much the other receives from us. Jesus is calling us, reminding us to live out the first commandment. I am the Lord your God who rescued you out of the land of Egypt. You shall have no other gods before me. God is our eternal treasure, our eternal home and destination. And where our treasure is, there our hearts will be also. So what about wealth? When even the most materially poor among us are sitting inside an air-conditioned building on comfy seats, we can grab a cold drink from the water fountain or the fridge, a hot cup of coffee. Most of us probably even drove a car here and some household like ours will drive two separate cars. We who are wealthy beyond most people in the world's imagination, where does that leave us? Well, it places us a whole lot closer to the temptation of putting our trust and our security in the wrong God with the little g versus our true God who we come to worship this morning. The one who we turn to because no amount of money in the world can buy the love or the way of shalom that God freely offers to us. The love that Jesus expressed throughout his ministry, the love that conquered fear and hate expressed through the cross. God's love, whose desire that everyone be saved. So when 401ks crash, home values plummet, jobs are lost, health fails, God is still beside us, loving us, encouraging us, strengthening us, and bringing us together in community to feed us body and soul. Now, an aside about wealth for us materially wealthy people, one of the frequently misquoted texts of the Bible is money is the root of all kinds of evil, and that's incorrect. The text reads, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Love rooted in the heart, misdirected away from its proper orientation towards God and towards our neighbor, and instead towards serving wealth. Money can and is used to serve the kingdom of God. It is essential in our economy for buying food, shelter, medicine, and other necessities. We use money here all the time for having well-maintained facilities, facilities that we use for worship and share with the community by hosting Lutheran Services Carolinas and their ongoing ministries of resettling refugees. This building hosts the Foothill Chorale's chorus rehearsals. The Fellowship Hall is an election day voting site, a meeting place for the Monday morning quilting group and miscellaneous other requests that pop up from time to time. It's here where we host some college student activities and, and welcome the leadership of the Clemson University Habitat for Humanity Club. It is here where we gather as a community to encourage and challenge one another in weekly Bible studies and discipleship development for work in God's world. I'll close with one of my favorite stories about being shrewd in using wealth for the benefit of whom Jesus called the least of these. And this story comes from Mother Teresa's life. She probably like every other director of a nonprofit ministry learned how to be shrewd in order to stretch their resources and garner additional support. In Calcutta, Mother Teresa was approached by a commercial real estate developer who was interested in their property and the surrounding properties to put up a development, I believe a, a market of some sort. And the developer approached her with a low ball offer, figuring that the sum that they were offering was sufficient 
for a religious woman who was, after all, only overseeing a house for the dying. They were hoping to pick it up as cheaply as possible, at the very least at the low end. But this prayerful, diminutive woman was also shrewd and possessed enough worldly smarts to recognize the value of the property to, per, to the prospective buyer. She negotiated with them until she was satisfied with their offer of giving her enough property elsewhere so that she could significantly expand their ministry. Her love for God and those she was serving gave her the resolve to negotiate the best deal possible. She wasn't looking to personally profit from this real estate transaction, but she used this unexpected opportunity to further the work of God's kingdom. We cannot serve God and wealth, but by God's grace and guidance, we can use our wealth to serve God and to serve our neighbor. Amen. Please stand as you're able and let us profess our faith together through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into heaven. On the third day, <clears throat> he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God, our Savior, you keep your church in faith and truth. Accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlighten preachers, teachers, seminarians, and all those who share your good news with the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Divine Teacher, you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how best to care for the earth and its resources, and guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. God of grace, hear our prayer. Ruler of the nations, you direct those in authority. Give leaders wisdom and compassion so that all may live in peace. Inspire public servants to follow the example of your courageous leaders and safeguard the dignity of each person. God of grace, hear our prayer. Helper of the needy, you lift up those who are oppressed. Breathe justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger. Sustain food ministry, clothing banks, and emergency shelters. Provide for those in any need. Today we especially pray for Anita, Ed, Ben, Karen, Jimmy, Alton, Scott, Greg, Gail, Pat, Jack and Rosalind, Tony, Randy, Joyce, Margaret, Mona, Jean, John, Herm, Chris, Michael, Donna, Ken, Ruth, Nikki, Gary, and Maida and Manuel. Provide for those in need, for those others in need who are in our hearts and on our lips.
God of grace, hear our prayer. Sustainer and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of wealth and resources that we share generously. God of grace, giver of life, we celebrate new births. We especially celebrate Calla Mae, the new granddaughter of Marion Benton. God of grace. Other prayer intercessions are now welcomed, whether aloud, spoken aloud, or in your hearts. God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us faithful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us with them to the heavenly feast that has no end. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear the cries of the friends and family of Clemson University student Joseph McPartland grieving his death this week. Comfort them at this time of devastating loss. God of grace, Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Jesus Christ be with you always. Let's share a sign of God's peace with one another. Let's pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ who sets a table for all. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, gracious, and merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence which have sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and ascension, We pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Christ with Christ in Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, all glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered and one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For our communion distribution, those on my left will come around the communion rail to my left and those on the right over here. I'll come first with the bread or if your preference is for a gluten-free wafer, let me know so I can serve you. That will be followed by Cheryl with the wine or if your preference is grape juice, please extend your index finger. If you'd like to receive a blessing, simply cross your arms across your chest. For those who are communing at home, offer the elements to the body of Christ given or broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the Lord's table, and everyone is invited to come forward to receive.
please stand for the prayers and blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen.